Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 56 of Mythicast. I'm Hazy, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mythic Freakin' Michaela, the queen of my favorite cosplay TikTok. What's going on, Michaela? Hello, everyone. Can, can I ask? I, I don't actually know, because uh, I don't go on the TikTok that I follow you the most on very often right now. Did Did the one that you sent me, like, a week and a half ago go public yet or is that for an event no that's for an event okay all right so i'll shut my mouth stay tuned stay tuned i i love it the, i i like legitimately you connect me to a part of magic that i really appreciate but like i don't know i i don't get it too i should do it someday though like maybe i'll do it for an rc one day where i'll like just show up dressed as like sarkin that'd be hot i i would need to grow, either grow my hair to get like a sick wig Oh yeah, wigs are easy. So, uh, with that being said, you might be wondering, like, what is going on? This showed up on my podcast feed again. I've been subscribed to this podcast for like, you know, three years. It goes on and off. Uh, yeah, that's true. We are recording, and we'll get into what that means in the future of this episode. But before we do that, now nah, let's just do it now. Let's just do it now. Uh. Michaela, we agreed that we wanted to come back. We both miss doing the show. We wanted to come back. Uh, one, I just like recording with Michaela. Like, uh, I think that if they're uh, of like co hosts I've had on my podcast that I've never met, which is a lot of them, Michaela, like, you're one of my favorites. I, I just, I really appreciate you. I appreciate that we both have this parenting thing that goes on behind the scenes. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I can trust you and like be myself with you. And I'm really excited to be doing the show with you again. And we both kind of agreed to do it monthly. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be back. And yeah, monthly is what makes sense for us. Yeah. So uh, I know that some people heard that we were doing this. We got a bunch of follows on Twitter when they were like, oh my gosh, this podcast is coming back. Or this podcast is like a monthly podcast. I don't have to de dedicate as much time to it as other shows. I think monthly makes a lot of sense for the show too. It, it gets us the opportunity to, when months are important to do set reviews, when months are important to do like guests to talk about like their climb to mythic or their qualification for the arena stuff. And like, we'll continue to focus on arena on this show, which is not something that's a part of the Constructed Criticism Network right now, right? Like other than like the fact that Sam focuses a little bit on best of one for his podcast, like, this just isn't a part of our network, and I, I'm really excited to get to do this with Michaela. So, uh, really quickly, though, if you want to expand your Magic the Gathering outside of Arena, Magic Online is a great way to do that. We want to give a shout out to our sponsor at Pure MTGO. It's really cool that we can just come back, and I know that if I post this podcast, Pure MTGO is going to support us, Michaela. Um, I mean, like, uh, I don't know what you do with your pure MTGO credit when I give it to you, but like for me, like I either get to build a collection, I've I've sold the credit, I've also uh, there's like a ton of things that we get to do, and like honestly, because of the fact that uh, Magic Online supports standards so well with the challenges, like we can use what we do on Arena to go into these standard challenges on MTGO, and pure MTGO is a great place to. Uh, get, gather content and their sponsor at MTGO Traders is really great. So, uh, let's talk about ready for battle. Straight up, uh, I, this was not me, Michaela, but my kids got these out today. Literally, this, like uh, this doesn't fit me. This is a child's wristband, but straight up, my kids were in my room today and these just started showing up on my floor. Do you have yours too? That would be so funny. Um, I believe they're like somewhere behind me, yeah. like in my magic shelf that exists back there. But uh, speaking of which, I guess I probably will have to bring some along with uh, me for Philadelphia. Dude, you totally should. You totally should. Uh, so hashtag ready for battle is the point of this podcast. We want to be doing what we can to supply our listeners with the information they need to be ready for battle on the ladder, whether it's a challenge on MTGO or whether it's their local RCQ with standard or even Pioneer in a lot of cases, depending on how Explorer looks in the future. Um, I'm going to go first. I 
Uh, I tested a different deck this week. I talked a little bit about it on Constructed Criticism. Michaela, you and I are both a fan of, like, the Gruul's Vehicles deck. I think we both like that deck a lot. Did you see the green-black version that Top 8 did the challenge? I did not, but I was also not a big fan of the Gruul's Vehicles deck. Oh, you were not a fan. Okay, I thought you were. Uh, that's my bad. Uh, so... I mean, I, I, I queued a league with it and, like, very easily won some games. Yeah. But... I, I'm, it's, it's my favorite deck in Pioneer, but there was a version that, uh, I, I'm told this Doom Lake, I did not double check this during the podcast that I recorded last night, but, uh, it's like a Thought Seize Fatal Push deck that, uh, still gets to play all the vehicles, but gets to play Thought Seize as, like, its spell instead. And, you know, being ready for battle, trying to be ready for battle as I, as I kind of look towards Pioneer... This uh, is something that is really transferable onto Arena. And I actually think that Arena is in a really good place for this deck, where Thoughtseize is actually in a better place in Arena than it might be in Pioneer, due to the fact that, like, ex just, like, the missing cards, breaking up strategies is really important. But I, I, I want to give caution to people who might be trying to pick this deck up that I, I'm not a fan of an 8-elf Thoughtseize deck. I think that that is a a way to to draw yourself out of games and i wanted to talk about that on the show before we kind of get into the specifics of a format um but yeah I, i've been playing a ton of vehicles decks and i tried this deck and i like i like the face you made the listeners can't see that the viewers can michaela michaela why would you not want four thoughts in your eight elf deck you know those are all cards I want to be playing on turn one, and I'm less excited to be playing as the little game goes on. Situationally, obviously, there's times where I might be excited to draw Thoughtseize, but rarely. Well, it's so funny because, like, people uh, in the CCMTG Discord, one of the things that I've talked about a lot because people ask me a lot of questions about rural vehicles because I played so much is like, oh, yeah, I often sideboard out some elves. And they're like, what? How would you do that? I was like, I sideboard out a Llanowar Elf, and I sideboard out an Elvish Mystic. And they're like, oh, it plays eight Elves. That's right. You like, you might not need eight in every matchup. And it's like, yeah. And then you go to the version with Thoughtseize, and you're like, yeah, you definitely don't need eight in it. Like, it's the same thing. It's You are either disrupting their early turns, or you're advancing your early turn. It's It is the same card. And you do not need 12 elves. Like, that's just... That's not happening. Uh, anyway. I'm not trying to crap on this deck either. I actually uh, did, in fact, 5-0 a league with this deck. It's very good. I just think that... It, it is... It, Thought Seize is good. I think that, like, the actual answer is, like, cutting a couple elves and actually playing two, like, Blood Chief's Thirst. Where, like, you get to, like, have more... Versatile removal, be like a real mid-range deck, play a couple of Raskas in the main, stuff like that. Like being a real mid-range deck with like six elves and Thoughtseize kind of sounds hot, especially with like uh like the 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 suite of three drops you get to play. But I am not a fan of like the twelve one drop deck. Especially why are you playing one blooming marsh? That's that's wild to me. Oh I was about to, that's actually I was Googling fast over here because I couldn't remember like what the cycles were. Um so uh speaking yeah, of which one, we're, one blooming marsh. Go ahead, go ahead, Michaela. Uh copper line gorge in uh the gruel deck though, because we haven't had that, right? Yeah. Come on, you can't spoil them next month podcast as we do the set review. But no, straight up, we get the fast lands. We both get them on Arena, but also this is the, them coming to Pioneer. I I think that Copperline Gorge and Razor Ridge Thicket specifically are going to be huge. Like, they're going to be massive, especially with eight elves in the format. But but also, like, you know, think of the number of one mana red spells. Uh, I it, It's so funny because, like, it's actually kind of hard to play something like red splash green for like uh burning tree emissary and like other green stuff a lot because like you just don't have enough fast lands like you have eight which is you would feel like enough but like once you get to 12 
like we both played that standard format, right? Like where we had twelve dual lands uh, in in allied colors, and you're like, yeah, I just actually two colors is free. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I agree with you, Michaela. Like the format is about to change a ton, um, and the the mana specifically will change a ton with those fast lands. What about you? What have you been doing to be ready for battle? I, I know that, so I actually don't know what VML, what the state of VML is. Cause like, I know, I know that the seasons are like not always aligned with when I can watch, but you didn't make the, the top eight. Is it a new season now? Um, I do not know exactly when the next season starts. I'm assuming sometime in February. I think they're still playing top eight okay. right now. Um, I'm a little bit out of the loop. I did not make playoffs. Um, it was a little rough this season for me. But, you know. You were too busy and, winning RCQs, so it's fine. I don't even have the excuse. You, Honestly, it was actually really tough to try to fit in VML along with, like, our, uh, the regional championship prep yeah. at the same time. Well, you um, also started You started a new job right before the regional championship qualifier started, didn't you? No. No, I started a job last year, so... Is that, it's been a year. I've been, yeah, it's been over a year. That's that's a new job to me. I'm not that. I'm not as cool as you. You're like, no, I started a job a year ago. I'm like, yeah, it takes it takes six months for me to get into any job, Michaela. You you might be cooler <laughs> and smarter than me, but like that's how long it takes me. Well, um, yeah, I feel like I've been in my job for like five years at this point. So. Sure, that's because you deal with taxes. That just probably uh, every day feels like a year. <laughs> But no, what what have you been working on? Um, honestly, I've been working on cosplay. <laughs> um, you know, I've what I have started to think about is what is going RC's playing RCQs this season going to look like for me? Is it going to be feasible for me? And what do I have to do? Um, one thing I'm I I need to get into modern. There's no way around it for me. So that's something I need to start thinking about. That, um, that's the same for me in my region. Um, I, I, I want to pause you really quickly. Uh, you, you took a season off, which I, I think that we should highlight that you knew that kind of after qualifying for the RC, you were going to take the next season off. So now you're looking at this and you're, you're saying like modern is a priority. Yeah. Modern, modern is a priority right now because it's, I don't really have uh, options for other qualifiers. There might be a pioneer or a standard or a sealed randomly, but those are all much further drives. Like I think everything that's actually within like two hours of me is modern. Uh, 100% of the qualifiers in Utah, both in Salt Lake and Utah County are either modern or sealed. So I I totally feel you. Um, I want sealed. (laughs) I know. Sealed's the coolest. I'm, I'm going to a sealed one. We have a sealed one, not this weekend, but the next weekend. If I don't win this weekend, I'll be going to the sealed one. I, I totally feel you. But what what's really interesting is, like, I see the number of people that say that they can only get Pioneer to fire in their local areas. And, like, our stores won't run anything but Modern or Sealed. Like, they're just like, no, we're not doing that. Like, so it, it's funny that Omaha might be similar to Salt Lake in that way. Yeah, I, I think every we have like three Omaha qualifiers, I believe, and a link and a couple Lincoln qualifiers, and I think they schedule them all modern. Uh, it, I, I think a majority of Des Moines is also modern as well. It, it's so funny, and like we, I, I'd love to talk about this with you if you're willing to, but like mm-hmm. this this tournament qualifies for a Pioneer tournament, mm-hmm. so like your modern players might show up more for these qualifiers, but like they're gonna have to play Pioneer at the end of the day and i get it like you're trying to do what's best for like your store but what are we doing like like these this is it's a pioneer season like everyone's going at the end of the day everyone's going to a pioneer tournament how are we not scheduling pioneer yeah at least somewhat or at least like a mix honestly something i wish they would do is make it so that a store can't schedule the same format in back-to-back seasons or if they can, that it has to be the season of the tournament, right? Yeah, that also be there. So here's the thing: is that like uh, all of the premium stores get two tournaments, right? 
So it'd be really easy for them to be like, okay, we want to support our modern community that's really big, but we also want to support the season. You just do whatever the season is, and then whatever, and then a modern tournament. I I agree. Uh, oh, yeah. I also I just think modern's really like this is the one modern deck that I own in completion what right is it? here. It's Breach. Oh. Um. Nice. So. Just guy Breach or Team of Breach. Just guy. Okay. Um. Or not just is it. Just, is it just guy? Yeah, I think it's just guy. Um, <laughs> You're like, I, I don't I, even know I'm what's not in my deck box. Actually, I'm not the one who's actually played the deck. Did I get every single card together for the deck? Yes. Have I actually played the deck myself? No. Um, there's I kind of like the Rakdos deck, but yeah, I'm I'm having trouble getting every single card I need together for modern. Like I kind of have like five partially completed decks at this point. So that's that's another struggle with it. It's and anything I need to finish is just gonna be expensive. So what what if our listeners are like, all right, I have the same problem in my local community. Um, how I think that this is a good opportunity for us to talk about like what we're doing to maybe offset that. Um, I got the QPs or not not even QPs. That's actually not where they are. I have the play in points on arena for the next arena event. Like I'm gonna play mm-hmm. that uh, the play in tournament to for free um, to do that, uh, and that's kind of like my arena rcq but i i think that like there's lots of opportunities outside of paper magic but you you do have to kind of focus on when you're trying to be ready for battle on what's in front of you and so while michaela and i might have to focus on modern i don't think that takes away from like the mechanics that things like explorer and standard teach us yeah absolutely your magic skills are going to trick transfer across formats for me it's that learning curve of just getting into modern in general but then i'm going to figure out things from there right what a what a can i ask you i actually have two questions for you and then we can kind of move on to the state of arena what attracted you to the breach deck um and like how do you think that transferred like i know that you were playing a ton of pioneer uh like six months ago so um the breach deck is put together because my husband wants to play it in Vegas. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna be honest. That's the reason that's the actual modern deck that got fully put together. Brandon, <laughs> that's hey, a good reason. That's a good have, reason. That's a good I reason. Have, I was given the two Italian Legends pack to do with <laughs> what I want. <laughs> I feel like I'm a real right. winner. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are. All right, Brandon. <laughs> Shake hands. <laughs> No, I uh, for what it's worth, uh, I actually think that your your skill bond scam is actually really good. Obviously, like this podcast is about modern. I don't want to dive too deep in it, but I, I think mm-hmm. the scam is like I I watched scam win games um, every weekend. I play challenges with my friends on arena on on MTGO, even if I'm not playing. Where like I'll just jump in and like round two or three after I like settle the kids down. And I, I think this scam is, like, both pretty inexpensive for Modern and then also, like, a top three deck. So I, I think you've yeah. got a good read there. Yeah, and I think it's a skill set, too, that will transfer yeah. easily for me, too. It's yeah. not, lear- like, I'm sure I could learn Breach, but <laughs> let's be real. It's a little different. It, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that uh, it's a good good skill transfer. Uh, let's go on to our, our main topic, the state of arena. I want to I want to talk about standard first. Um. So, uh, man, people love crapping on standard, Michaela, and this format's really hard to crap on. Uh, I'm, it, I might be people. Ooh, oh, Michaela, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you some deck. Just, I'm just going to read you the goldfish page. We got Grixis, Soldiers, Mono Red, Rakdos, Esper, Mono White. Is it Mono Blue, Mardu, Mono Black? I'm going to include Boros in this. Uh, we have 11 decks that all could win a standard event. What are you going to crap on? It's it's so many mid-range mirrors. I, I like... I don't know. I just, I did not enjoy my, B- I know it's like slightly different than a lot of my VML season was, but I just did not 
So and I just didn't enjoy the matchups like a lot. And I love so something like a Chris's mid range deck. So I do think that Azorius and Mono Red had not come to the forefront when yeah. you were playing VML, mm-hmm. uh, which them coming up is like a huge deal. I do think that like the Gris, the Grixis Esper, which is that was honestly the whole format when you were playing VML. Mm-hmm. If we're being oh, honest. No, no. Well, uh, then I had multiple opponents, multiple weeks in a row, register model blue against me. And oh, I was losing and then you it. lost. Cause... No, no, I won, but not. What? Do you ever really win when you have to stress all week about playing against model blue? So, uh, one, I'm surprised you won because I think that model blue has an excellent matchup against both Grixis <laughs> and Esper. But I, I think that was what's really been interesting about this standard form is like mono blue was like keeping the format in check. Mono white enters the format. Is it control enters the format? And then you have like three three decks that are like, no, no, Grixis and Esper. You don't get to do this. But now how do we attack those decks? And then mono red and soldiers kind of come into the field to like clean things up. Yeah, I, I just like where I was with standard, like when I left off was I had so many games where it's like, if I don't keep a three lander and I miss my third, my third land drop, the game's not going to go well. That oh. that is true. This is this it's, is important. This is actually like the next point. Is that three drops matter more in this standard form than any format that I've ever talked about? Uh, whether it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, whether it's um, oh my gosh, what's the white enchantment called? Wedding wedding announcement. Wedding announcement. I think wedding announcement. Uh, what, uh, those, just those two cards alone have, like, shaped this format, um, and then Mono Black has had to try to figure out how to get around the fact that, like, it lost a card unjustifiably, like, maybe I'm wrong, like, maybe Azorius and Mono Red couldn't exist if Miho Massacre was in the format, but, like, Mono Black Aggro would be, like, a top deck if not... For me uh, being gone, um, I, I'm going to say some stuff really quick, Michaela, and you, you just keep me in check. There's no reason to play Rakdos. You you should either play Mono Black or Grixis. If you're going to bend your mana, just bend it. Uh, Rakdos is just bad Grixis. Uh, Mono Black is really perfect mana to do a lot of the same things, but like having like really like you go from having an impossible mono blue matchup to like yeah i can't lose to mono blue which is like a huge deal um and then esper kind of has stayed stagnant like it's it's kind of stayed where the format has to account for rafim and wedding announcement but that's kind of it Mm mm-hmm yeah, I agree. I, I just, I, and my problem is when I switched back to like Esper, Esper definitely does not seem as powerful as Grixis does. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it takes um, as good of advantage of wedding announcement as um, like the white mid range deck does. And, and it, it doesn't have the same impact as like the three drop um, of Fable the Mirror Break here in Grixis. Yeah. I, Rafine, I, though. Yes. <laughs> that is the whole deck, right? Like the deck is like, <laughs> Can I play Rafine early? I think you're absolutely right. And it, it, it comes down to so many questions, right? Like, you you talk about the problem with wedding announcement. It's like, well, if I'm not as, as good as a wedding announcement as, like, Boros or Mono White, am I... Am I Your what? two drops aren't exciting. Well, it's no... Funny, Blood Tithe the, Harvester is, like, so much better than any two drops. That's the played. thing, right? Like... How did Blood Tide Harvester end up being better than uh, Underdog? Like, how how did that happen? I, I always want Underdog to be good, and just there's it, some, it there's is good. There are sometimes it's absolutely beautiful, and there's other times that it just underperforms. It is good, but it's what you said. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. what is it good at? Oh, well, it's really good at crewing my bank buster. <laughs> And the other thing is, is like, I think that the Esper deck right now, it doesn't, it isn't the best Bank Pleasure deck, it isn't the best Wedding Announcement deck, it isn't the best Shialdra deck, it isn't, is it even the best Wandering Emperor deck? I don't think so. 
So, like, what is it the best at? It doesn't top deck well either. Like, yeah. First. I I agree. I I think that. I think that standard has an interesting place where mono black, mono blue, mono red, and Azorius have made this format about getting over, under, and through three mana enchantments in the form of wedding announcement and uh, and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and the fact that Esper midrange other three drop which is like the important card that you you mentioned the three drops are important is Rafine. Also, the card that kills three mana enchantments is Destroy Evil also happens to kill this card. <laughs> it just makes it a lot worse. I agree. And, you know, a little bit of that flows over into Pioneer, but not quite to the same extent because I think you have a little more range in what your decks can do in Pioneer. Yeah. Um... I, I, I do think that you highlighted the thing that I want to talk about the most, which is, like, the th the three-mana slot. You also highlighted a lot of the two-mana slot, but is there anything that you... I, I know that, like, you've been on a, a little bit of a magic break, at least at least during the last season. I don't know. I don't, I, we haven't talked before the, the show today, but, like, is there anything that, like, whether it's, like, Grixis Sack, Racto Sack, uh... Blue eye control. Is there anything that you've been looking at to outside of those top decks that you wanted to highlight? You know, I, I can't say I have. I think there was a week that I considered that Rakdos sack deck um, as a cute metagame choice. Uh, I think whatever my opponent registered, I ended up being very happy I didn't register that deck. Sure. But um, ju just to change it up. And yeah, I'm, I think that I think that deck has a place, not. Well, Maybe I, an overall great deck in the meta, I, but... I, I'll mention that I played against Junsack the, recently that played the... Um, I think it might have been one of your cards on our set review. Or maybe it's the episode that didn't come out where we talked about cards like in the pre-show. Where I think you talked about the 1-1 one, one, that every time you played an artifact, I got a 1-1 one, one counter. The... the do you remember? The, it's from the, the Brothers yeah, Word. I, do you remember this what? card? Like, very vaguely. It's like a dinosaur. Anyway, I played against this card, and it was playing that instead of the, uh, the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the blue-red artifact planeswalker. What's her name? Uh, um, Sahili. Sahili, thank you. You're the best, Mahila. Uh, yeah, so it was playing that instead of Sahili, and I was like, oh my gosh, uh, this is so much worse. And I actually thought of you because I thought that you would like the Grixis deck so much, where it was like this is like value engine, like multiple uh interactions per turn. That's not the right word. Multiple or what's the word I'm looking for? Uh multiple it's not interactions, though. What is the word? Choices? Decisions? Yeah, decisions. You have, like, a lot of decisions per turn. I, I was thinking of you while I was playing against it, too. I was like, I'm so excited to talk to, Mi uh, to Michaela about this deck. Whereas, like, when you play the green, you don't get that. So mm -hmm. I, I was curious what your thoughts were on that. One of the things that happened recently that, like, we don't get to talk about on the show because it fell off the radar is is it Control was actually, like, a huge part of the standard metagame for, like, a month. And then Mono White, Mono Red, and uh, Azorius really tried to, like, take advantage of that. So, I, I just wanted to call that out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Explorer. Uh, Michaela, I know you play Arena. I assume you play Explorer. I've no? actually not touched Explorer at all. No, because really? Pioneer, I focused on just getting ready for Pioneer only. That's and... so cool. Wait, how did you hate... How did you hate on uh, on my deck vehicles then? Because it's like the same as Pioneer almost. <laughs> like, it is. It is. They're actually the same deck. Close enough. Actually, yeah. yeah, it's like one of the top five decks. Why are you hating on my? Why are you hating on my stuff? No, I actually think that Explorer is really interesting, uh, and and for what it's worth, that like, uh, it's funny. Like, there are. 
a, a few decks that I think that are really, really popular in Explorer that I want to talk about really quick before we kind of wrap up today uh, on our Welcome Back episode. One of them is... I, one of them is Gruel. I actually think that Gruel is one of the most popular decks. I think that it is a top five deck in Pioneer and Explorer. So it gives it a lot of legs in the format. The other is actually Green White Angels. Um, while this deck doesn't have its best banner, I think it will... Once Razor Verge Thicket is in there, like get bent people like you're you're in trouble uh this deck gets so many collected company effects between uh kalia's is it invocation or invitation or whatever uh and then collected company that you're gonna be in huge huge trouble uh humans is almost completely transferable in that format uh and then honestly like mono red has been really good in that format for me uh way over performance compared to how it does in pioneer and then michaela one of your favorite decks rectus is like just a port you don't get or herborg but like you have the same deck you don't need herborg i definitely played rc key without it because i <laughs> my i was supposed to borrow one and uh the person didn't show up with it Actually, hold on. Good side note. Good story about that. I was playing Rakdos Mirror, and my opponent plays an Urborg. I go, "Oh, good. I didn't have one of those." <laughs> That's that is a good story. Uh, I hope your opponent was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Look, it you're me. like, I hope you I cast like Invoke <laughs> in the next turn. You're like, "Sick, Invoke you." <laughs> like, that was the Invoke era of Black Red too, so that's hot. I I hope you invoked them. Did you invoke them? Oh, invoke, yeah, Invoke is great. I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened in the match. I no, just remember my I'm gonna opponent pretend was kind of like fun bantering. I'm going to pretend that you didn't have Black Mana and invoked them the following turn. That is that makes the story so much better. No, I so there's 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 an intriguing part of this uh, format one. We don't have the build spells, right? So, like, is it Drake's is not as good. Um, we don't have everything for mono green because we don't have... What is it that we're missing for mono green? Uh... There's something. We just got Nick those, but we're still missing... We're missing something. I don't even care yeah, I'm what try I'm trying to think. I'm not totally sure. Off, because you, you have the Cavalier there, obviously. Um... Yeah. Yeah. We have Karn, we have Nykthos, we have all the elves, we have You have Storm of the Festival. Oh, you don't have you don't have uh this is kind of BS though. You don't have uh Sylvan Caratid. Um you do have Storm of the Festival. Um the, there's there's a lot missing in kind of like random spots. Okay. Yeah, I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, I no, I, it's not in the show notes. This is something that I should have put in the show notes, Michaela. But one of the things that we do see is like Igmatic and fires, mm. like a lot on the ladder. Oh, talk about this! You're you're excited about this? I love fires decks. I love playing them. So do you like right. the four color version? I I guess there are two versions: There's the Yorion version and the uh, uh is it Aruga? Uh, uh, Karuga. Karuga. Yeah, yeah which so, one do you like? Um, one, uh, one of the people who I tested with, she ended up on um, the Yorian version, but that deck is skill testing. <laughs> or not, but just also knowing your deck and knowing your opponent's deck. It, it feels like playing like humans in modern, right? Like, you, you gotta know what your plan is in every situation. Um, but seeing that deck play out especially when like somebody knows what they're doing with it is really really cool like uh definitely in some of our testing she pulled herself out of some situations that i did not see coming um so is it one of the best decks i don't think so however i think um if you can get really skilled with it it has like a lot of play to it and um it's kind of those decks, decks that sometimes people just don't see coming you know be the sneaky choice right and um, I definitely had an Ashiok in my uh, RC sideboard for a minute just to mess with her. Uh, oh. 
And then the Krugafires, as I feel like that deck's weaker. Um, it has, I think it has like more powerful early turns possible, but it's just, it, it just seems like the weaker deck overall and has a little bit less play to it at times. Totally fair. Let's let's wrap this up. I know that like, mm-hmm. this is like our welcome back episode. Like we haven't been doing this mm-hmm. in a long time. We just wanted to say hello to the listeners, like talk about the formats. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll go first, uh, but I want us to both say what like we're going to jump into the ladder or we're going to jump into an event to try to get qualifier points. What are we playing in standard and then what are we playing in explorer? Um, for me... In standard, Michaela, don't shoot me. I, I if you wanted qualifier points, there are only two decks I would play. I'm gonna give you both of them, and then I'm gonna give you the actual one. Uh, you should either play mono blue tempo or mono black aggro. I think that both both in events and on ladder, they will get you the qualifier points faster, and you will have the most good matchups per like minute if that makes sense um honestly like the i i own the blue red tempo deck that like is mono blue splashing for uh fable of the mirror breaker and the third whatever the the two drop that like makes one one tokens and it just doesn't play delver it's like just blue red tempo I would still play mono blue. I, I actually just think that like the five drop that draws you according to your islands and stuff like it's that good, especially with the new set. Um, I've really enjoyed mono black. Uh, if you're a patron of CCMDG, uh, you had early access to this, but I've been playing a Gissa. It's a black black two for a four four that it exiles your opponent's creatures when you kill it and puts it onto your side of the battlefield. And if you kill your opponent's Sheldred, no one will ever win. Like, ever. It doesn't happen. Uh, so, that being said, I would just play Mono Blue. I, I think that it's, like, the easiest thing to get Mythic with. I think it's the easiest thing to get Mythic points with. And then once you qualify, you should decide between Mono Black, Grixis, and... That's it. Those are the only decks you should consider. For uh, for Explorer, I believe there is only one deck that you should play. Uh, I think that it's Gruel Boat. I think that that deck is the best deck in Explorer. Uh, having a good matchup against Rakdos and Mono Green and whatever people are doing, it does not, in my opinion, have a great Angels matchup. And, like, that is a deck that you'll see a lot. But, like, so much of the format doesn't have a good Angels matchup where, like, that's, like, a tax you have to pay that I'm not willing to pay yet. Uh, you have a good mono-white matchup. That's another deck that you'll see a ton of. Stuff like that. That That's kind of my two options. What are you? What do you, like... Michaela, even if you haven't played, like, what are you thinking going into, like, this advice? Yeah, you know, I I would be in a spot that I'm I'm giving the advice, like, if there's a deck that you're comfortable with that is falls in the top tier, you know, give it a shot. Try it. Like, if I had a, if somebody told me, go get Mythic right now, I'm like, okay, I will play Grixis mid-range. It's still, it's a solid deck. Uh, it's not gonna be the fastest thing to it's, get me to it's Mythic. It's the best deck. But it is the best. Yeah. It, and and I'll give you some advice for free, Michaela. Play one one main one side of the uh the worm. Oh, yeah, it's already in my deck. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> um and then uh for explorer, I like I would still stick with what am I comfortable with? I would stick to Rakdos. If I'm running into a lot of gruel boats. I would probably change my mind because I think that matchup is a little bit rough for, on the, for Rakdos. But that's what I would stick with. I, I think that's fair. And I think that Rakdos is the second fastest deck you would get to Mythic with, right? <laughs> or the second fastest deck you would get to the QPs with. Like, it gets to play Thoughtseize with the fast clock. It gets to play 
I mean, you, you can talk about it. Like, it, it's so fast still. Uh, yeah, it, it can absolutely be fast. Yeah, you have... I, I know playing the deck, I had a lot of times where it's like, okay, my plan just has to be, how can I start attacking my opponent as soon as possible? Um, that's you, like that's how I was being green sometimes, was just getting a clock early enough. You're, you're actually the one that convinced me the, a bloodthirsty adversary in that deck, and people thought that it was me. They're like, Spencer's just touting his own card of, like, that he is a huge advocate of. And I didn't want to be like, no... It was actually Michaela winning her RCQ and like a bunch of other people telling me about this card. But uh, I actually have a black red list that if there was a Pioneer uh, Pioneer RCQ near me, I would play and it would have Bloodthirsty Adversary still. I was on Hazard was my Oh, maybe card. I combined. Maybe it was <laughs> hold on. I wanna I wanna back up. Cause you're right. It was Abe. That was on that from my other podcast, and you on Hazard, and I combined them. <laughs> I but, mean, Hazard will definitely have close out a game. Ha- Hazard also discards things to Bloodthirsty Adversary. It, it was hot. I'm just saying, <laughs> the between you and Abe, you guys gave me a great list. So <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, Michaela, I enjoyed this. What if you were to give somebody advice, like? They're not sure about standard or explore the future of arena or competitive match. How, how are people going to listen to the show? What like what are they going to get from it? Like how how will they be ready for battle next month? You know, I think part of being ready for battle is knowing knowing when maybe it's too much to play or a format isn't for you, and being able to like regroup yourself when you need to um so i agree and i I think that like one of the things that you did really good at uh that maybe i missed at the beginning of the show was like you were like uh you actually had messaged me about the rcq that i i couldn't attend because i started a new job you're like or the rc sorry and you're like hey do you want to come like i have this extra pass and i was like oh i can't come and then you're like okay but like i can't I'm not going next season. Like, no matter what happens, I'm not doing that. And I think that people miss the honesty with themselves really often in Magic. Like, they feel like if they don't get Mythic, or if they don't get the QPs for Mythic, they're like a worse Magic player. And I just want listeners to know, like, as we come back, that's not true. Michaela, can I tell you a secret? I got Mythic zero times since we last recorded where I got Mythic every time we recorded. Zero times. I was like, I'm not doing a Mythic cast with Michaela. I'm not doing this. Like, I don't have any interest in it. You're not a failure as a Magic player for prioritizing other things. Yeah, and you know, and sometimes when you do that, you come back stronger, you come back better, you come back more focused. I, every time I take like a break, whether it be, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months, years in the past, I've come back a better player. Yeah. I I really appreciate having you on the show. And if you want to share the rest of the network, you can go over to uh, CCMTG where I do it with, right now it's just Abe. Mason's on a little bit of break, but back soon. You can check out Sam Black show where he talks about limited uh, I believe this is the best podcast in Magic right now. If you're not listening to Drafting Archetypes to literally teach you everything you need to know about drafting a deck, you're messing up. Uh, and then you can find... Uh, that's it. That's it right now, actually. I, I just... Go ahead. I, need, I also need to plug that co- that podcast. Sam is so good on that podcast that I seriously thought there was two people on that podcast. Dude, he's so good, right? <laughs> I've told people this. So when I, I'm behind the scenes, this I've never told this on CC. I'm going to tell it here. Sam Sam interviewed multiple people to be his producer. I got the job and I was like, okay, what do you want from me? What do you need from me? And he needs, he needs a lot, but so little at the same time. It's so funny that I, I don't, 
like it, Michaela and my other coast might be like, you do nothing for Sam from like a production standpoint, like writing his show notes, like doing Sam does all of it. The only thing I do is pay the editor, hire the editor, make sure the editor does a good job, post the show. Like Sam, Sam is so good. If you're not listening to the show, you should. Michaela, you just show up and we do this, right? Like that is, that is, Sam just does it all by himself. There's no Spencer. I offered to be Spencer. He said, no, I got it. I got this. So. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on every podcasting platform. Michaela, I'm so happy to be back with you. I told Michaela that I had a dream like two weeks ago that my wife, Devin Aaron, her husband, Brandon, threw us a party and what's weird is the party was in like Colorado. Uh, Michaela lives in Oklahoma, and I live in Utah. You don't live in Oklahoma? <laughs> That's where Lincoln is. No, it's not. Hold on, wait. Are you in Nebraska? <laughs> yes. All right, I'm strong. This I'm is not a ge- this is not a geography podcast. <laughs> Where is Nebraska compared to Oklahoma? Is it far? Colorado is like right in between Nebraska and Utah. <laughs> Wait, you're you're two states over from me? Yes. That's so funny. I'm leaving that in. That's gas. Oh my gosh. You're actually, you're like, I guess that's like 12 hours though. That's so far. Well, today everybody learned um, U.S. geography is lacking. I thought, so hold on. <laughs> That's that's gas. I'm not gonna go into this more. I did <laughs> I did think you were in Oklahoma. I that's two that, states. I out. actually blame Link and Riley. As I'm thinking about this, Lincoln Riley, Rink, Lincoln Riley is to blame for being the Oklahoma coach. Now that I think about it, uh, I did know that Lincoln was in Nebraska. Uh, where can people find you though, Michaela? They cannot find you in Oklahoma though. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I will. I will not be. To my knowledge, I will not be at any Oklahoma RCQs. Um, you never know. Though I, I went to GP there once. Um, yeah, I'm Mythic Michaela on all platforms, uh, TikTok, whatnot, Twitter, sometimes Instagram. This is funny because you definitely told me that you were in Nebraska at least two hundred times. Yes. She's like, yeah, I did. So I just look like an idiot. Uh. You can find me at Spencer13H basically everywhere. Um, you can find me in Utah, not in Oklahoma. And then you can find us on Mythicast. We're going to do this every month. But we didn't talk about this at the beginning of the show. But we're we're not... We're, like, set to record the third week of every month, Michaela. But we'll, we'll adjust that if there's, like, a, a big event... Or if there's like a set release, like we'll we'll adjust it. We we will be once a month, but it will be the best time for that month. You have to. Absolutely. It's an audio podcast, Michaela. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I remember <laughs> nodding. Like yes, she yes. is. It's it's gas. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. If you love the show, like, subscribe, review. Um, Michaela, I gotta ask for the visual listeners only. You moved Spyro and Jigglypuff up. No, I didn't. They've always been there. No, they were they've on the desk been... behind you. No, they've always been there. No, I'm not okay with this. I This is slander. I need somebody. What is the favorite in your room right now? Well, the Spyro's mine. So The Jigglypuff is Brandon's. I know that. Huh. Yeah, Spyro's so, mine. So Spyro's the favorite still? Yeah, I think the so. Listener. I don't know. The They're more just can't. existing. Actually, um, next to the Spyro, you can cut, you can barely see it, but that brown thing is a miniature version of Kana's barrel from Fairy Tale, and you can open, <gasps> actually open it up and put drinks in it. If you want to talk to Michaela about an anime that I want to watch really bad, would my wife like it? Would would Dem- she loved? Uh, she loved. Um, oh my gosh, the full metal Gauss- a full metal Alchemist Brotherhood is that is it worth? I, I think she'd like it. It's it's kind of silly and fun, but serious at times. 
So okay. um, I, I think Bubble Battle Alchemist is like a little bit more of a serious oh, plot line. It's so much. It, <laughs> sh- my wife is like a binge watcher. Mm-hmm. Fun fact for listeners. I'm not a binge watcher. So we watched two episodes. I'm like, okay, I need to process this and think about it. My wife is like, are you serious? Like, we can just watch the next three episodes. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I need to, like, think about this. So, um, Yeah, I uh, might have watched all three seasons of Dark on Netflix in, like, three days. So, All right, so we know where Michaela stands. Let us know where you stand. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Thank you everybody so much for listening. We'll see you guys on next time with another episode of Arena Mythicast.